Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another one of Dave's faves. Now, I said I'd be doing some operas, and I'm going to be doing some operas, and not always the most usual operas, because I tend to go by composer. I don't really care what the opera is. I care about the composer. If I like the composer and he wrote operas, then I like the operas. But this is, I think, just, it's one of those operas everyone needs to hear and everyone should have, and people sort of honor it in the breach by not listening to it, which is a terrible mistake because it's glorious. I'm referring to Gluck's Orfeo. And in this recording, which is unbelievably fantastic, with Marilyn Horn as Orfeo, the incomparable Marilyn Horn, and Eurydice, or Eurydice, or whatever the heck you want to call her, is Pilar Loringar, who is wonderful, and Amor, love, is Helen Donaff. This is the orchestra and chorus of the Royal Opera House under Georg Schulte. This is one of those sort of sleeper recordings. Not everybody knows about it. It's fabulous. It's the best Orfeo out there, hands down. And I'm including all of the period instrument ones with the fake castrati and countertenors and other creepy creatures crawling around the stage. I mean, some of them are quite good. Don't get me wrong. They really are. And Orfeo, like all of Gluck's work, is an editorial mess. It really is. I mean, you know, there's the original version and the revised French version, and then there's, you know, hybrids between them and, and you know, what instruments he wrote for. And then it, it's just a disaster of editorial, you know, nightmarishness, which allows, of course, a lot of the period instrument people to sell you on a new edition, um, which is... Yeah, okay. But the bottom line is the regular edition, which is was actually put together by Berlioz, and then he died before he finished it, and then it was sort of arranged um, a bit later, is really the one that we hear most of the time. And it's, it's, a, it's also a hybrid in some ways. And who cares? The music is just fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. They only have three characters. It's not terribly long. This is 106 minutes in this version, which is, you know, an hour and 46 minutes. It's about as long as Mahler's Third Symphony, the whole opera. And wow, is it beautiful. You know, Gluck has a reputation because he was the great operatic reformer, the guy who banished all the crazy coloratura and virtuoso operatic display of opera Syria, Baroque opera Syria, and sort of put all of the music into continuous, continuous recitation, almost in the French style, closer to Rameau and those people. But he also wrote his arias and other things and choruses and whatnot. But basically, the music is continuous. The, the emotional expression is unremittingly intense. It's fascinating to me. You know, Gluck is considered to be this sort of cold, formal classicist because he got rid of all of that crazy singer-oriented stuff, or that was what he claimed he wanted to do. He didn't always. He wasn't foolish, but he did largely. And as a result of that, people look at him as this sort of austere, puritanical, uh, you, you know, kind of reformer guy. But that's so not true. That's so not what he was. The reason he got rid of all of that stuff was so that he could focus, so that he could focus on the direct expression of emotion, unencumbered by the need for the singer to display and to write da capo arias and ABA form and all of that stuff. That's why he did it. And his music is is wonderfully colorful and vivid, and and it's just astonishingly wonderful. And, uh, you know, everybody, everyone should have Gluck. And I have to say, I mean, I may knock the period instrument people, but, you know, John Elliott Gardner has been the big Gluckian, the Gluck guy on period instruments, and his Gluck recordings are some of the best things he's done. They're mostly splendid, absolutely splendid, because the music is just fabulous. And so this little opera... This little three-character, 106-minute opera, if you don't like opera, listen to this. But you like music from the classical period. It was composed, this thing, it was around 1760. And it is astonishingly expressive and beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And what is more, 
you are not going to find it better sung than by Marilyn Horn in this incredibly exciting recording. I mean, Schulte conducts like a demon, which you need because you have demons in here. You have the dance of the furies. You know, it's 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 so marvelous. And there are there are moments, moments that are absolutely timeless in this music. It is just so wonderful. So I mean, what can I tell you? I can't force you to listen to Cluck. He was only the most important operatic composer of the of the entire second half of the of the you know eighteenth century before Mozart, and rightly so. Oh my God, it's fabulous stuff. Trust me. How's that? Please trust me. You're gonna love it. It's just marvelous. Sit down with the words and just just listen. Just, just listen. Anyway. Like I said, listen, keep on listening. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.